Hello and welcome to my next video on worked answers. This is for the Pearson slash Edexcel Mechanics M1 paper and as you can see it's from the June 27 series. Hopefully from having a look at this you'll see how a teacher like me, average teacher, would go about showing his uh, students how much they should be writing because as we know in some cases they write too much, too little. In some cases the diagrams aren't good enough or not even there but let's see how I'd go about these things. So first question is pretty straightforward all right you can see where the marks come from uh, students do have a tendency to waffle on these personally just go straight all right just go straight for the uh, forces left equal right forces up equal down or just take them away to uh, make zero uh, either way you go about it the mark scheme gives you three marks for those and like a lot of maths it ultimately boils down to setting out your simultaneous equations do them however you want as you can see i've gone about this one by trebling the j question two if you don't draw a diagram for question two for conservation of momentum type questions then you know what what's the point you've really got to get used to these in terms of setting out what's hitting what what's your positive direction and so on and because it helps you set up this line there you just can't go wrong if you've got the right direction mvm u etc etc and like a lot of these questions everything ends up cancelling out in the end don't overcomplicate part b if you have a go at it just stick to uh stick to the simple things have a look at the mark scheme you'll see that that's all they're looking for and for part c magnitude of the impulse well you've got a formula for that so just apply the formula get the marks and just leave it don't overcomplicate. as you can see don't write too much seven mark question five lines plus a diagram that's about right question three a lot going off in the words when you have a go at this paper all right a lot going off loads and loads of waffle up here so definitely draw a diagram make sure you get your labels in what's happening where because that really does help not necessarily when you set up your resolving vertically but certainly when you start to take moments around a coordinates around a point all right you've got to make sure i always go for forces clockwise equals forces anti-clockwise and again like a lot of these things cancelling out mark schemes always very generous very heavy for the setting up of equations correctly and very few marks for actually solving them and when it comes to part b you know the standard two ways in which assumptions so again stick to the basics don't overcomplicate. i've just gone for the rod is inflexible in other words doesn't bend and that it is uniform in other words that the weight acts at the center so keep it simple and these questions seven marks absolute gold mine but as you can see it's five for getting those equations right and only really a couple later on for getting the answers all right so don't over waffle do draw a diagram make sure you get the labels in and i do think you can make these tough looking questions seem extremely easy question four the old uh, inclined plane my advice to my students is always to get your triangles sorted get your angles labeled and make sure you know any force that's being given always is on the hypotenuse of each triangle that you're going to be using and then from your angle you can go sine for opposite cos for adjacent from your angle sine for opposite cos for adjacent you don't really get any marks for this bit but it's absolutely essential for when you get to these stages and as you can see get the diagram right all you're working out is really really simple and a nine mark question as you can see lots of marks again for the setting up very few marks for the actual solving the way i'd go about it i wouldn't bother with resolving vertically or horizontally you've got an inclined plane i think it's much better 
to go about resolving perpendicular. I always think of it as forces acting away from the plane equal the forces acting into the plane. And same here, forces acting up the slope equal forces acting down the slope. All right, the missing mark from the eight there is for the application of f equals mu r because it is on the point of slipping. Keep it simple. Once you get that sorted, everything else for me falls nicely into place. Question five. Lots of ways you can go about this individual particle, individual particle for Q. I've gone for the old Newton, all right, on the whole system, because that sets it up for me. Newton on the whole system keeps it simple, keeps your numbers simple, and again, works out really well, really easy for a couple of quick marks. And then when you find the thrust in the rod, all right, you can take have a look at just have a look at just particle p f equals ma yet again and all the numbers fall into place for a really easy six mark question just as long as you know i've quickly put on the acceleration quickly stuck on the 15 newtons uh, force upwards onto q and the rest of it they just really start falling into place quite quickly Next one, question six. You've had a go at this one with a cyclist. It's the old equations of motion. As you can see, I always tell my students, make a list of everything you know. In this case, initial velocity, time and displacement. And think, what do I need? I'm after acceleration. So the equation without the U in it is this one. And off you go. For part B, requires a rethink. All right, because part B is half the journey with acceleration. So you can't just go halving anything willy nilly. I've gone for find your U. All right, you can use your information for V equals U plus AT. Finding your U, your acceleration is constant and half the distance. So what's the equation which does not contain a V? This fella, the S equals UT, etc. And off you go, ends up being a nice answer, reject the negative as per usual. Again, gold mine up here of early setup and solve marks. Gold mine down here for early setting up. Always make sure you set up the it clearly show the examiner exactly where the equations are coming from. Question seven. This is one of those questions. I'll mention it in my other video. Lots of marks there. All right, lots of marks, lots of waffle. But actually, the waffle is longer than the solution. So for the answer to A, soccer toa, the old toa. All right, don't forget to add on the 90 degrees because its bearings measured from north. So it's 90 plus 12.5. On the B, keep it simple, nice and easy. P in terms of Q. Sorry, P and Q in terms of T, it's where they start and where they're going. That's how I explain it, where they start and where are they going. All right, another batch of marks there for not a lot of work. For C, all right, don't forget Q my, QP is P minus Q. Get that the right way around. And because I've lined it up up there, nine take away one. 10 took away 4, and so on. Collect like terms for an easy couple of marks. Part D, all right, the old find out when they're 10 kilometers apart. Good old Pythagoras. So horizontal squared plus vertical squared equals 10 squared. You get this horrible looking quadratic, but everything ends up disappearing with an easy factorization and a couple of simple, nice values for T. Finally, question eight. Students of mine never a fan of questions when there aren't many numbers, but this is not as bad as it seems. No point for me in redrawing the diagram. The one you're given is good enough. Couple of things on there. Regards to friction equals mu r, because it's, it's, it's actually moving. And r equals mg, resolving vertically. And those come into play. Later on, you're awarded a couple of marks for those. So get them on the diagram. Have a read of all the waffle if you have to, but essentially it breaks down to not that bad 
a fin finale of a question. So the way you start off, it's always Newton, isn't it, on these sort of questions. F equals MA and F equals MA for four easy marks. I've done the whole system. All right, I think the whole system is the best way of going about this one. Each to their own, I suppose. So you've got MG minus mu R equals 3MA. M's as normal cancel. And as you can see, works out to be the third G times the brackets as everything else, uh, as the question required. For part C, find in terms of G, H and mu. So you've got loads of stuff going on, but the good news is you've got U, you've got a kind of A, and you kind of know S. It's H, basically. So again, you want V. All right, so use the equation without T in it. And off you go. Nice and straightforward. Then for part D, some proper math comes into play before the easy finale, easy finish. F equals MA on impact tells you that it, the particle's moving independently. So there's no forward force. There's only a resistive force. So it's minus mu R equals 2MA. As per usual, lots of things cancel. And I apply this one because you know that V is zero. You know, sorry, you know that V uh, is zero. U squared and all that malarkey is just the final part. V there becomes your U in the next part and it's squared. So the sir uh, disappears. Minus 2AS. All right, don't forget the minus. Loads of things cancel and you end up with S equals a third H. Don't forget to add it on. Because by the time the particles hit the floor, the particle on the table has also moved a distance of h, giving you 1 plus a third. And for e, usual standard one marker right at the end, it'd be in equilibrium. Just the force down would equal the force left and they'd be balancing themselves out. Thanks for listening. Hopefully it's enough to make you like and subscribe. And we're going to be trying to do about two of these videos per week. So keep checking back for further updates. Thanks for watching.